What a wonderful season we've had of racing uh, throughout Australia, but especially at Flemington and an Executive General Manager of Racing League. Jordan's been good enough to join us to reflect on so many highs and so much drama, Lee. Great to see you, mate. How are you? Yeah, great to join you, Richo, and um, terrific to review the season. It was a great season. 25 premium Flemington meetings uh, for the year, which is that's what we're basing ourselves on, those premium-type meetings. 14 Group 1s in excess of $50 million in prize money. And as you said, lots of highs and lots of lows and, a, you know, an interesting end to the season with the COVID-19 situation. Yeah, it certainly was. Let's uh, reflect on some of the brilliant moments. Uh, first and most, obviously, uh, the great race, the Lexus Melbourne Cup, a race that's close to your heart. You've travelled the world over the last two decades, promoting it around the world. But this year, it was so unique. We had some great Europeans who ran superb races, but we had an Aussie victory, and one of the really good guys of racing in Craig Williams gets his first Lexus Melbourne Cup. Yeah, what, what a great win it was for Australia. And as you said, we had lots of international runners. And is, isn't the Melbourne Cup just a wonderful race? How I remember when the Japanese won it back in 2006, Everyone said the Japanese are going to win it from now on. French won it two years in a row. They'll win it every year. Internationals will dominate. And now Australia's with Vow and Declare. Craig Williams' first ever Classic Melbourne Cup win. Same Williams. with Danny O'Brien. And a win for Australia. And uh, who knows, it'll probably be a dominant Australian win this year too as well. But what, what, what a great race it was. It had all the drama. Frankie de Tori with uh, you know, Master Reality. And um, yeah, just had it all. It was, it was a great race. It was extraordinary, wasn't it? Uh, it's the race that's always uh, the signature event uh, at Flemington, and it's a race that always has so much drama. You touched on Danny O'Brien. That was a fair training performance, wasn't it? Because he's in many ways trained this horse like a European, raced him when the European horses were racing uh, over in Europe, whereas he was doing it in Queensland, and lightly raced into the Melbourne Cup, you know, basically third up. Yeah, as you said, like in, in the winter, he was he ran second in the Queensland Derby and then he went on to the Tats Cup as well, over 3,000, which was interesting, gave him a little break. And as you said, like sec his second in the Caulfield Cup was, was a fantastic run and a great pointer. And in the race itself in the Melbourne Cup, it was unusual tactics. Craig, Craig led, which he probably wasn't, um, probably I'd say pre-race probably wasn't the plan, but uh, what a great ride it was. And he was headed a few times in the straight, and uh, just fought it out gutsy at the end. It was just a fantastic race to watch. And um, Prince of Aaron, who ran third last year, ran third over the line, was promoted to, to second with the protest with Frankie, with all the drama again with Frankie. And, um, yeah, so it was, it was a great effort too. Prince of Aaron, he just seems to grow legs here. He does nothing back in Europe, comes to Australia, and he's just a different horse. It's an amazing effort. Yeah, he's the modern-day Red Cadeau. They're very, very similar the way that they race in Europe versus the way they race in Australia. Um, the four days of Flemington Cup Carnival, I mean, Melbourne Cup Carnival is just breathtaking, isn't it? We know that. So many highlights. For me, Nature Strip Sprint just jumped off the page. Sustained speed was brilliant to watch. It was, wasn't it? He, he was just so dominant in the daily sprint. Uh, James McDonald just went out. He just powered away. He, he was he was super in his win. Um, what else can you say? And he's turned out, I mean, he's a fantastic sprinter, isn't he, Nature Strip? Um, uh, interestingly, um, I mean, I, I think the, the tactics on the day played a fair, fair, bit to, to, fair bit in the race. You know, he went out and he really just sort of took it right on and, and really, you know, put, 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 put him to the sword, put the rest of the field to the sword. It was, it was a great, great win and a really exciting sprint, you know, on the last day. And then when we think of Derby Day, I mean, gee, we had some tough weather, didn't we? I mean, on the day we had 15 mils on Derby Day. You know, it was, it was you know, really testing conditions. Um, and as you said, I mean, what, what a day, you know, warning winning the Derby was, it was a great win. Um, for me, I think Melody Bell winning the Empire Rose was just, she was just sensational that day. To do what she did to come from the position and eat up the ground and, and win the Empire Rose, the group won over a mile. I thought that was one of the wins of the day. It was, it was horrific. Yeah, fierce impact winning the Cantala. So he backed up what he uh, did in the Turax. He won his second group one. Where the Coolmore Stud Stakes, breathtaking finish with exceedance, um, defeating Bivouac. They'll both eventually uh, be superstars at Stud, no doubt. And then 
if we fast forward towards the last day of the carnival, I've touched on Nature Strip, but we've got an opportunity to see the great jockey Ryan Moore with Magic Wand, an outstanding mare going toe to toe with this great New Zealand mare in Melody Bell. Yeah, look, and Magic Wand, um, you know, she ran in the Cox Plate. Um, she won in the Mel she ran in the Melbourne Cup. So um, the plan had obviously already been hatched beforehand that they were definitely going to back up. Um, I think he was probably hoping maybe to win the Melbourne Cup and the McKinnon. But um, so what, what a training effort and what an effort by her. And I mean, she, she's a super horse. I mean, she went on from there to Hong Kong, ran second in the Hong Kong Cup uh, behind uh, Win Bright, the Japanese horse. Gone, gone back, she's already won a Group 2 uh, back in Ireland this season. And um, if the internationals come out, um, she may come out again and try and win the McKinnon two years in a row. A horse that started his career, he's bred over in Ireland, but has been racing in Australia, won the Tab Turnbull Stakes. And what a training performance by Chris Waller. He trained four Group 1 winners in Sydney on the same day at Turnbull Day. He trained two winners at Flemington. One of them was the Group 1, the Tab Turnbull Stakes, and he resurrected Kingswell Dream. He is a master trainer. He is, and look, we all remember 2018 in the Cox Plate where Kingswell Dream failed to finish, and... Um, Gee, hearts through and mouths, weren't they, that day, Richo? Everyone thought, you know, that could be it. And, um, you know, it was sort of like they've saved him. That was the big thing, which was great, great effort. But not just save him, but to come back a year later and, and, and win the Turnbull. I mean, that was that was a great great ride by Jai McNeil. Um, Finch and uh, Hartnell, I remember, were, were sort of, he had to hold them off. And Hartnell was a grand performer. But, yeah, that was mad scenes in the mounting yard that day. A lot of a lot of owners yelling and screaming and hugging and crying, you know. So it was it was terrific. His first Group One, John McNeil, but a man who's captured over a hundred Group Ones. In fact, he's captured more Group Ones in Australia than any other jockey. Is Damien Oliver, and during this Cup Carnival, a little bit of uh, Melbourne Cup Carnival history for him. Yeah, he, he was staring down the uh, most amount of wins over the carnival, and um, in 2008, uh, 18, sorry, he he levelled with um, uh, with the, with a total amount of, of wins on on 72 yeah. with Bobby Lewis. Bobby Lewis held the record. The last day, uh, the last race, order of command won the Grand Handicap down the straight and took Damien to, to equal 72. So he had to wait a whole season. I think we we're yeah. all nervous. Could he go through the whole four days without a win? But no, he did it easy on the first day. Um, Miami Bound won the wakeful. And he went to 73. And what a carnival he had. You know, he won the Derby on warning. He won the Oaks yeah. with Miami Bound for Danny O'Brien. You know, just a super effort. And to win that amount of races over those four days of the carnival and to beat, you know, a guy like Bobby Lewis, it was uh, a credit to him. And he's just, he's a legend, Damien Oliver, really. No doubt in that. We'll, mo we'll move away from racing in a moment uh, to some of the other great initiatives that uh, that you and your team have put together. But while we're reflecting all the Group 1s, um, he's a pretty special horse, that Queenslander, isn't he? Alligator Blood. He's winning the Australian Guineas and the C.S. Hayes. Uh, it was brilliant. Well, the C.S. Hayes, um, you know, a lot of people say that was nearly the race of the season, you know. Him and Catalyst sort of like was like Bone Crusher, our Waverly Star type stuff, wasn't it? <laughs> Down the straight, that was a fantastic race. And then um, the Guineas, I think a lot of people thought, well, you know, is the CS Hayes taking it too much out of him? You know, will he go on to the Guineas? But no, he, he was he was he was superior in the Guineas, wasn't he? Um, he he just was a fantastic horse. Um, Superstorm ran second, and then Superstorm ran went on to the All Star Mile to run second in that, so which was good. Um, Alligator Blood probably a little bit disappointing in the All Star Mile, but. He, he'd been up since the Magic Means. He'd been up for a long while. So uh, it was a great effort. But, um, he's a super horse. And what is what is it with Lindsay Park and their attack on the Australian Cup? As a whole corporation, as a whole family entity, they won their 10th Australian Cup. Unbelievable achievement. It, it is, isn't it? 10, ten Australian Cups. Uh, Hayes, Hayes, Dabney, what a combination. Uh, 50 stars. I mean... Jerry Ryan owned the horse. I see the stars. I think he was looking for like a real top class group one so he can stand him at stud. And the Australian Cup was an emphatic win for him and a real highlight, you know, for the day. But we learned a lot about a lot of new terms uh, throughout the season. A new term that uh, we learned is rapid racing. What is it? Yeah, rapid racing. Well, at the club, you know, we're looking at trying to do some new things, Richo. Um, trying to innovate. 
trying to get people, uh, new people back to the races, as well as doing something different for our existing clients, uh, fans, but something new. So basically we looked at, we do something a bit different. We make something a bit punchier. So we looked at just running seven races down the straight, doing 30 minute gaps. So we compacted the program into three hours. We thought we've got to add something different to that as well. So we looked at a jockey's challenge. We worked with the VJA. We came up with a Metro V Country type uh, challenge. And coming into the last, they, they won three races apiece, um, country led on points. And in the last race, the Metro guys ran one, two and, and knocked them off. But it was, it was good. It was good fun. It was the first time we've done it. I, I think it's got a future. We're definitely going to do it again. And, um, yeah, we, we're just looking at those sort of concepts to try and just bring, bring new people back to the sport. Champions bring people back to the sport. And uh, wasn't it brilliant to see Black Caviar actually arrive at the races? The reaction that she got when she paraded before the Black Caviar Lightning Stage, which was won by Geetra, and Pete Moody there, all the owners, that was a moment we'll never forget for the season. No, you're right. I mean, all the owners there in the middle of the mounting yard uh, watching her walk around. I mean, we've got to thank the connections for getting her to come to the races. I mean, she hadn't been there for seven years. She, she won the Lightning seven, from seven years ago. And as you said, Geetra, Geetra was very underrated. He's pretty, he's very good on the day. But yeah, Black Caviar was a highlight. I remember when she came in and walked around the mounting yard and People just lined the fences uh, up in the grandstand. They all come out of everywhere just to watch her. And um, you know, Pete Moody there, trying to actually uh, batter and whatever. She had none of that. I think she probably thought, hang on, this guy's going to get me back into training, so I don't want to bother him. So it was, it was quite good. It was a great moment for the connections. I mean, lots of tears there as well. So, uh, but, but, but a great moment for Flemington and, and for Black Caviar and the connection. And looking at her and seeing the way she paraded, you knew how well that she's been looked after in her post-racing career. And I know it's something that equine welfare is right to the forefront of your mind at the VRC. Correct. And, and we uh, we created the Equine Wellbeing Fund uh, last year. And in uh, December, we put uh, a million dollars into the fund to kickstart it. And um, there's, there's lots of initiatives. I mean, we're, our main thing is for horses coming to Flemington, that we want the best of facilities. Um, our, our track is prepared with giving it for the horses pull up sound. We've rubberized all the walking paths up to the mounting yard and onto the track. Uh, we we uh, commissioned a, a state of the art horse ambulance for the spring carnival. It's able to lower to the ground so horses can walk straight on. And, and we used it a couple of times and it made a huge difference. Um, so there's a lot of other initiatives. The poly track that we've put in the training center, state of the art. We've got a few other initiatives um, on, on the way forward, but our main aim at Flemington is definitely uh, the, the equine thoroughbred is number one in our eyes and we'll do uh, a lot of initiatives over the next six months, years to come to make sure that um, our facilities are A1. Yeah, and, and late in the season, we might have actually seen a horse to follow into the spring in front page. Yeah, it's, it's interesting, isn't it? He, he, was, he was a great winner of the Kresik. I mean, the Kresik's becoming a... A real guide to the future. I mean, Gitra won it um, the year before, Nature Strip the year before that. So, uh, a listed race in, in winter is starting to produce some top line horses. But you said front page, Jeff Giray. I mean, the connection's not back big money in Hong Kong um, to stay here. So, you know, can he be the next Gitra, the next Nature Strip? It's exciting. So, I mean, that winter, that winter racing is really sort of producing some stars, which is great. You're doing a great job, mate. Uh, one final question. I'll give you some think music. Your highlight of the whole season. I'll give you mine to allow you some time to think. And my highlight of the whole season was James McDonald, 300 metres out in the VRC Sprint Classic, looking around on Nature Strip and shaking his head at how far in front he was. When he hit the line, he looked back and then screamed at the top of his lungs, wow. Because and then just kept shaking his head on how fast that horse was. Of everything we saw this season at Flemington, everything I saw in Australian racing, that was the moment for me. It's interesting that was, and I'm not going to say that because you've just said that. But um, I mean, you know, even we haven't even mentioned Ocean X winning the the Andrew Ramsden and getting a ticket in 
a golden ticket into and, and Mick Price just being over the moon in a totally different atmosphere where usually there's crowds. You remember the year before was Steel Prince and, and, and the, the, the mounting yards erupted. And where this year we're under COVID-19, we had a totally different experience. But I suppose I might be fairly predictable here, Richard, and say so Craig Williams and Danny O'Brien winning the Melbourne Cup. And, and Craig is a fantastic bloke and... Um, he, well deserved, you know. He, he's, he's a great ambassador for the support, and Danny's one of our, our leading trainers at Flemington, who's also a, a great ambassador for our Flemington training centre and complex. So um, predictable, I know, but uh, for me, that, that was the highlight. It's hard to go past, mate. You and your team, and everyone at the VRC, have got so much to be proud of of the season that was, and we'll bring on next season, mate. We can't wait. Thanks for your time. No, thanks, Rich. Um, we, we're looking forward to having crowds back. I can't wait to have crowds back at, at Flemington and looking forward to this year's Spring Carnival. It's great to join you.